seeing you here. Who's going to win this? 215. Athletes stand Colin by. Trumbly. I really like Chan, though. Go. Just creeping. You're close enough to smell her. Will be the hero How do I smell? Or ocean potion. Ocean potion. Well. Ocean potion. Cream a little bit of banter. <laughs> hey. Your hands are so cold. Nine, Just kidding. <laughs> we know there's nothing cold around here. Awesome. Push jerk. Did that, did that itch your um, CrossFit Games competition itch? <laughs> yeah, you know what, I just want to beat this guy. I'm not too worried about the games right now, I just want to beat this guy on the next one. The, the, what are you guys doing next? Who knows what we're going to demo next. If it's the last event, it's going to be rough. Are you proud of your victory? Yeah, of course. Matt's a legend, love to go against him any day. Legs and hips extended and the elbows slightly in front of the bar. Before the bar returns off of the shoulders. Are yeah, the guys snatching first again? Men are snatching at 335. Okay. That's 40 minutes from now. That's not a lot of time. Stacy, was there any uh, passing out on that one for you? Passing out? Yeah. No, I, I thought about Murph. He died for us. You know, I just kept moving and I thought about him several times and um, yeah, it was a cool workout to do. I think I PR'd and I've never done it with a vest before, so it's cool. How is your recovery doing? Um, I'm fine. My legs feel a little heavy right now, and I got one little itty bitty rip on my thumb that I gotta fix up. Did you see some of the girls out there who were needing medical attention and were swerving around? And yeah, I did. Cara Webb was right in front of me. It's hot. I mean, I was on the field. I think like second 50 of push-ups, and I was like, oh shit, like. This is really hot. Nothing I haven't trained with before. I mean, it was like 110 in Omaha one day. So when Murph was announced, you never, you never tested it out? No. And what is that? Um, I don't know. I need to ask my coach. We did a bunch of different variations. He's the guy who has the, the tattoo on his neck, right? Yeah, you should ask him about those tattoos, too. Have you asked him about them? Um, a little bit. He hasn't expressed everything yet, but I think he used to own a tattoo parlor is what I hear. All right, bye. Sam, was that fun? Uh, kind of. Fun the word. <laughs> I mean, you made it look fun. Uh, I don't suppose it's fun, it hurts. But it's always nice to, to win a workout. Trying, I can't remember another athlete who crossed the finish line like you did, where you just kind of crossed and took a few deep breaths, took your vest off, <laughs> and just started chilling. Was Longer that... workouts kind of suit me. You'll see after the DT, I'll probably be on the floor collapsing while others might not be as affected as much. Different workouts affect people differently. Did you feel that you were going to faint at all when you were out there? No, I, d I didn't feel like I went to that stage. It was hard, it was warm. The last run like sucked, especially because you can't really tell like, how far ahead you are or where other people are. I didn't want to give up first place. I'm not under any disillusion. I know that like 
Heavy lifts are not my strong point and that's why I've got to try and make points where I can. That's why I, why I went for the, the winning move. What mental adjustments do you make between completely different events? Car fainted, but she finished, but Annie didn't finish. Is it that hard out here? It is hard, it is hard. How does someone from Finland train for this year? You can. You have to come to States like three, four, five weeks before the games. We don't have this this heat back in Finland, so it's important to like like get to know the weather. It's, it's hard. I wish they put the games on on Finland someday. Minus 20 Celsius. We are used to used to breathe cold air, not hot air. <laughs> you survived. Yeah, I'm good. Amongst all the carnage. Yeah. No, I'm good. I'm just gonna take a shake, Dave. You want some berries? No. Give me the berries. It's really a nice color on you, Dave. Okay, okay. Isn't that nice color on him? Red. Yeah, he's a pretty boy. He goes with this uh, amazing blue eye. Cammy, did you think about fainting at all out there? No. I've done a couple of like uh, rays this year. You start knowing more like uh, just how you feel and where is this limit of like you know, if you push too far, it's not worth it to pass out or have to walk. So I think I was just trying to flirt with that. You were doing your air squats and I noticed you were looking around. Was it disheartening to you to see that you weren't in the front of the pack? No, I was looking around to try to distract myself. And if you see like, uh, I don't know if you saw it, but like when I would get tired, I would look up and I would hear someone say, go Cami, and I would smile. And that would like really like just, just make me feel like it's okay, you know? Like I know that's not my uh, my best uh, event, and it's you know it's never been. But 15 is better than 17, which it's what I did last year. And uh, while well, Kelly and me were like kind of at the same time, so I was just trying to use her to stay in pace. I think it was more strategic than like anything else. Yeah, I saw you give a thumbs up to someone in the crowd. Yeah, I was point. like, I'm good. Ian, do you go in there into the women's locker room? You don't no, go in there? they just text me naked pictures of themselves anyway. Do you go into the men's locker room? Yeah, they invite me into that one. Do you really go in there? No. No. <laughs> I am a champion. How was that? That was good. Here we go. Any, uh, any like, long-term damage from that? Like, emotionally? Uh, anything. Emotional, physical, heat-wise, like... Oh, that was hot. Whoa. Damn it. Picked the wrong one. Yeah, that was hot, but we'll see. I mean... Here's the deal. We got like five minutes to warm up for a nice heavy snatch, so we'll let, we'll see uh, we'll see if there's actual any damage. You going to snatch right now? Yeah, we got like five, ten minutes before we gotta go. All the dudes or just the first? All, all the second ones. All, the second all ones. checking at once. No more warming up either. Hey, hit it cold. We call it jaguar. We call it going jaguar. You know why? Does a dragger warm up before it go kills its prey? No, it sees prey, goes full speed, kills it. Yeah. Fires me up. Yeah, man. Daniel's agile like a cat. Dan is a fucking mongoose waiting to just jump. Um, every single time you take that extra second, all individual yeah, men. Good. Time to check in. Hey, you can help you. Get it. That one on the tape, cue. baby. That one cue. I'll go back. Yeah. Okay. When you do that, do you feel any pain or kinks or it just feels yummy to you? I think in the moment, it feels fine. But deep down inside, it's like when I'm finished, I'm like, that fucking sucked. That hurts. Joints are a little fucked up from Murph. That jersey looks good on you. Thank you. Ready? All right. Let's go. That's fun. Urine? Yeah, yeah, Ram's piss. Here, here's a little uh, a shout out. This is 10 Institute. Hydro cell, enhance your water, <laughs> multiply your water intake. It's really good for you. Do they sponsor yours? I uh, sponsor mine, yeah. Good, they're good stuff. And my dad comes, he's like, everybody's hitting 245, you gotta open at 250 because you gotta start heavier. I'm like, yeah. 
I should have. I, did, I tried to keep my eyes closed on what the field was doing to stick to my game plan, but I missed 225 in warm-up time. I didn't miss it twice, and I'm like, oh man, this is not a good feeling. <laughs> Throw 250 on the bar, missed it the first time, and quickly set up again, hit it the second time in that first 20 second gap. Are you celebrating a little bit inside, or? No, I'm still in second place. <laughs> second place sucks. Get used to it, buddy. <laughs> oh, baby! I like that. Shots fired. We were able to get some barbell belts, platform belt down there, guys. When we get down into the belly down there, this stuff is going to come really fast. And if you're not in your spot, you're not going to go out on the floor. Like, that's the bottom line. So be listening for us. The fans will pick heavy. Can't, can't flex cardio. <laughs> Dude, thank the Lord. I didn't have to do a sprint off at the end. Were you in a sprint? Yeah, it was Conway. Actually, I enjoyed it. It was a good finish. Yeah, it it's cool. Finish. It's epic. Because otherwise, I would have been just jogging across the field, and that would have been boring. You yeah. Know? So I was glad I got to jog across the field. <laughs> oh, okay. It felt better. You have a cooler story. <laughs> but I lost, so it's really not that cool. It is still cool. Shut up, Jacob. I don't remember getting back in the tunnel. It was all, I, I don't even, I don't know what happened. I was just running off, I don't know what. I watched Lone Survivor last night and this morning and I think in my head there was no way that I was gonna quit but I don't even know what happened and then 
passed out and took me about 45 minutes and three bags of fluid to come back to. Were you scared? Yeah. It was just more emotional than anything, but I was just worried that um, I was kind of going to let Brian down and let my little sister down. I'm trying to, um, I'm kind of trying to get some money so that I can pay for my little sister's private school. And um, I was really worried that I kind of let her down. And um, yeah, it was it was really scary. Your placement's good. Yeah, I um, I thought I like came. I didn't even think I finished it. And then Brian's like, "Oh, you came 13th." I'm like, I just like burst into tears because I didn't even think I finished it. And I thought it was over. I, I was like. Well, that's me done, you know, that's, I'll just go and have a baby or something. <laughs> you know, all these crazy thoughts going through your mind, like it's just, it's really emotional, but, you know, Brian said he's not giving up and I'm not giving up as long as it's safe to do so, so I'm just going to go out there and kind of just play around and see what I can do. Did you think when you were when you were out there, like, oh shit, something could go bad here? Yeah, I started to feel um, pretty bad on the push-ups, and I just... I don't know, you just push, it's meth. You're not going to quit and you're not going to, you know, I just kind of tried to just keep moving as much as I could. But, um, yeah. Oh. No rep, sorry. Um, yeah, you're not going to quit on Murph. you know what I mean? Like, it's a workout and people have done it way harder, so I think you just will do anything to get it done. Final snatch of 180. Final heat, Is that ladies, something that you can heat. do? It's normally quite light, but I don't know how to feel right now. Samantha Green. intense workout for a lot of people um, and it was I mean I can't speak for other people but for me I mean during it it was very intense not only physically but just being in the heat doing the movements like it's a long workout you have to be like I think just good in your head and you have to be able to like keep pushing and for me that was something that I kind of kept reminding myself just one rep at a time but during it you know, you're pushing yourself to the limit you know you want to find that line where you're not pushing too far but you can essentially get where you need to get Not my forehead, so. 
Do you have a little emergency trap door to make sure that you don't fall into any like super doldrum that you can't pull yourself out of? Oh, my girl made it. No, you just focus on the next rep, don't you? You can't, you can't change the past. And, you know, you, all you can do is do the present. So just focus on the next rep or push a little bit harder and have fun with it. The year you won gold in the Olympics? Yeah. How close was it? Very. The final race at one point I was in bronze medal. Ended up passing seven boats in one leg. I mean, it's, it's never over till it's over, right? Same with the CrossFit. It's never over till it's over, so. Other than that, I'm okay. It's a bit more. Yeah, I see some more food. How was that? That's all right. Obviously not fast enough. That's so my workout too. But I just have to work harder in other areas. Still a couple more days. That'll be all right. I just gave him a scoring and timing at the head table. Hey bro, your first drop of the game, and you take a first turn. Did you have any expectations of that? I knew that that was something that I should be really good at. But there's a lot of strong girls here, so I'm not surprised, I'm just really happy. Does you know, the crowd make you nervous, or do you feel like you flourish in that situation? It doesn't make me nervous, it's really cool to hear all the support that I have from people that I don't know, but I feel like I do know them. This whole experience, no matter where I finish the end of the weekend, is like so amazing and such a small percentage of people actually get here. And I got here with, you know, two and a half years of training, six days a week, and I'm gonna continue. So like wherever the chips fall this weekend, I'm like already pumped to just train my ass off all next year and come back. I feel like Murph has really broken a lot of people down emotionally. Yeah. What's going on out here? When you work out this hard, not only do you break your body down a little bit, but you take yourself mentally to a place that not many things that you could do in your life will take you to. And it's an emotional roller coaster. Do you know what motivates you? Do you know what your driving factor is? Like, do you have one thing that's in your life that's just like behind you pushing you? Just myself and where, and where I want to be. You know, I'm 25 and uh, I'm not gonna wait to be amazing or um, successful anymore. There's no reason to. And every day I don't make the decision to go or push or be better, I'm losing time. We only have so much time. And how did you realize that? How did you come to that conclusion? I made a decision back in 2013. You know, I was here and I was watching and I was like, I wanna be on that floor so bad. And the only way I could do it is if I committed. So I did. And I talked to Tommy, my old coach, and I was just like, I'm ready. And it was me just taking it one day at a time. And I still take it one day at a time. Because I am the queen of getting nervous or anxious about things that are down the road. So when I look at my programming, I look at today. I get that done, and then it's done. And I hang out with friends, and I eat, and I go to bed, and then I wake up the next morning, I open my email, I look at that day. When you go out dressed like this, let's say like you go to Vegas and you're by the pool like this. <laughs> in like a swimsuit? Like, yes. Done, yeah. 
What the fuck happens? Do it's people like, lose I'm a, their fucking mind? Really funny. So I had a girls' trip like for my bachelorette, and me and Margo got there before everyone else. And we were in our swimsuit. We actually were in gym clothes. And we were leaving the hotel just to go walk around. And everybody's like, oh, you guys must be going to the gym. Everyone wants to touch your biceps. I don't, it's like a pregnant woman. Like, you don't just walk up and touch a woman's belly. But everyone comes over and thinks that they can just grab my shoulders or my biceps or... It's literally like being in a circus. And it's entertaining and then sometimes gets old. But we're very fit and a lot of people just aren't probably used to seeing that. And we're so used to being in a community where it's very normal. You know, so when you step out of our big, huge family, big community, out of your box, out of the gym, or um, it's it's amazing. It seems unrealistic. It seems impossible to look the way like some of these women and men look. And so I let people respond to that the way that they will. And then if it's a little like at the pool in Vegas where there's people everywhere. Then you just kind of walk away. Uh, what was going through your mind when you missed that bar, and what, what did you do to reset? Okay, uh do you have any idea what the event is? No. It's Dave Castro. Let's do DT. No, never mind. Let's do heavy DT. Does he have nice hair? He's got beautiful hair. Yeah. Okay. Is that bag your dirty laundry? Yeah. Is that re is this relaxing for you, Dave? Very. This is um, calming. Yeah. Is it possible to bring like that TV over there? Right there. So we can watch. You can't put it right there because the barbell's coming in now. Yeah, fuck those Maybe barbells. we can see like moving yeah, closer. Yeah, right Hey, maybe you can write that on the questionnaire. I don't really watch the game. Bring the TVs closer for the athletes. Stop off, make some noise. Let's get on my side. For finishing, he never won the first with a time of. It seems like it would be a great workout for you. Yeah, we'll see. We will, won't we? We will. your day look like the rest of your evening probably mark pro and get off my feet and get as many calories in as I can watch a movie um, sleep yeah I'll try to get away from the, the hype try to stay off my phone and not look at the leaderboard <laughs> is your girlfriend here mm -hmm. she's my my fiance now congratulations what advice do you have for people who come to the game just couple um and one of them is an athlete hopefully you uh, or in a happy relationship because I don't know I don't have any problems with it. I my fiance is a uh, is a cross country coach and a college athlete herself, so she gets it and she knows she knows when uh, when I'm in a good mood and when I'm in a bad mood and what to do. <laughs>
was going to be this hard. Just knowing like how taxed my upper body felt for first. You know, I love overhead stuff, but I knew it was going to be fatigued. Have you ever done a training day that's like today? Murph, a snatch ladder, and then a heavy DT, or anything even equivalent to that? Probably not. It's the game. Nothing's supposed to be equivalent to it. Right. <laughs> right. That's what Dave really tries to you know, go for here. Right. You seem pretty upbeat and happy. You, you feel you got your head in the game still? Yeah. yeah. Just, it's working out. Like I'm, I'm super honored and blessed to be here. There are so many people who you know, train all year round and miss regionals or you know, just miss the game. So to be back four times in a row, being old, <laughs> like I just I feel very blessed to be here. It's a different year for me. I'm just very happy. So. Congratulations. Thank you. Are you going back to the yeah. warm area? Uh, did you have any idea that you'd be out there performing so well? I mean, that was my first really like event that I thought I did well on, but I've actually trained DT a couple times and I mean, I just had fun with it. Anything with barbell I can typically uh, just grind through. What's a typical day in your life? I um, schedule my classes in the morning so I can get those out of the way uh -huh. and then um, I'll go train from after I eat lunch I'll go train from about 12 to 3 or 4 however long it takes me and then I have the rest of the afternoon to do all my school work and stuff like that. When do you drink and smoke cigarettes and stay out <laughs> all night? And... I don't smoke but uh -huh. if I am going to drink I choose my nights wisely and if I have to train the next day then I won't go out. So it's hard to balance being a college student and training, but you just have to set your priorities straight and just pick your nights wisely, I guess. And how do you do that? What's pushing you? What's driving you to? I mean, about three years ago, before I even went to college, I had set a goal to go to the CrossFit Games. So, I mean, you just kind of have to make sacrifices to make that happen. Girl. Thank you. Good luck. You set that goal at 17. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck, guys. Um, yeah, I did. I started CrossFit, and I was actually 16 years old. Uh -huh. And so I've been doing it for a little over three years. And about the first year, I just did regular training, go to classes, and then I did my first competition, and I was hooked. What are you studying? Right now, it's just business and kinesiology. Just. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I kind of did business to be safe because I don't really know what I want to do yet. So, um, I mean, depending on how well it goes, maybe in two years I can just do CrossFit for a little while. Watch out, Spawn. Spawn, watch out. Hey, I like the protein shaker and stuff out here. Would it probably be out here still? Like a banana and a shake. Banana with an R? Banana, right, right, right. Yeah, banana. Right. <laughs> did you eat? I ate and I threw it up. You did? Yeah. Did you drink water? I drank water and I threw that up. So that's why I've been I've been chewing on ice. Uh huh. That worked well, but I ended up ultimately I just had to have a sleep. I just lay down for half an hour, 40 minutes. They just said I needed to get some blood flow back to my belly. Otherwise, I just couldn't handle any food. It's all gone to the rest of my body to try and recover. I'm going to break this one up a little more than I normally would. Just, um, yeah, just try and keep it smooth and steady and just keep moving. Just kind of keep chipping away at the reps as best I can. I'm just feeling really weak. Just generally, like, tired but weak is a big one. I reckon after a good night's sleep, I'll feel pretty good tomorrow. Sam, when you look around and you see all these new faces, what, what do you think? You see all these? It just shows the evolution of the sport. You're good, we're going to get younger athletes coming straight into the sport. Okay. It's just natural evolution. Do you think that there should be a Masters that starts at 35? Yeah, that's good. How are you? What do you think about this event? You were like doing 
know, so it kind of costs. Will you be recovered mentally 100% by tomorrow? Will you come out here just fucking chomping at the bitch tomorrow? Yes. That's what I want to do. There's... I can't look off. I'm definitely going to be a little bit sad tonight. I know that's going to happen. And there's no point of trying not to be. I'm an athlete and I care how I perform and how I do. And it's very frustrating when you don't have any control of it. It wasn't... I don't know. It wasn't that I'm bad in a workout like Murph because that's actually a workout I, I would say I'm pretty good at. Uh, but that was out of my control and that really sucks as a competitive athlete to have something like that uh, throw you off. So I'm going to be upset about it tonight, but tomorrow's a new day. There's still a lot of points in it. I know it's going to be really hard to work my way up to the podium, but there's nothing else I can do but try to look forward and make sure that I perform well in the rest of the workouts. You okay to back? Yeah, I'll be all right. All right. Good to see you. Hey, Pee. Hey. You shouldn't have any problems sleeping tonight. I'd be lucky if I eat dinner. I gotta eat dinner, but I'm gonna go get some anti-nausea. But it's hard to know, like, is it because of Merv or because of heat stroke or both? Wow. You feel pretty good about that? <laughs> yes, I really do. <laughs> I did not expect that. I, I was so stressed for Murph. Ah, uh, but it went so much better than I thought. I'm just gonna come tomorrow and do my best. Just think about one event at a time. I don't even want to look at the leaderboard because we're only halfway through, so it doesn't really matter. Anything can happen. You've proven that you can pretty much do it all. <laughs> yeah, I try to. <laughs> Is there, is there a weakness in your game anywhere? Yes. There is? Uh, gymnastics. Or a little bit gymnastics, but I've gotten better. What's a typical day for you like at home? I uh, wake up at about 8.30, go to train to like 11.45, coach from 12 to 1. Then I train again at about 2. Uh, maybe I do weightlifting in the morning, then I do some endurance at 2. Then I coach from like 4 to 7.30 and then I do a weakness workout. That's like three days a week. Then the other three days a week I do just two times a day. So at 10 and at 12, two. And uh, do you, you're not married I assume? No. So you don't have any kids? No, I have all the time that I want. Are you in school now? Uh, I was in school, I was studying psychology and I just uh, changed, so I'm going to start again in September to study business. This is my coach. I fucking told you. Ooh, very good. <laughs> yeah. oh. I just told her to stop celebrating, go get her stuff. We're waiting for her, so please hurry up. So, you know, she won. We already drilled that in as well. From every event, you know, we've had one event at a time, one event at a time. And we, we do very much keep them. That win after Murph, we celebrate, we give that positivity, and then we're like, okay, what's the next event? You cool down, you warm, and there's a structure to how they finish the event. You know, we deload them, they get back in here, and then they get ready to go again. And, and that's how it would be tonight, you know? They'll go, the focus is not on what they've done today, it's on how they have to do tomorrow, they have to come tomorrow fresh. We have been watching a lot of games footage from previous years, and you have 
competitors like Annie that always make a great comeback on the last day. Froning makes a great comeback on the last day. And I can get really fired up if they do well, so Singleton always reminds me that that's what happens. They make a great comeback on the, on the last day, and we need to be prepared for that. We can't celebrate too early. And I think with the new point system, you'll definitely see that that scoreboard changes around a lot. There's just you know, she's almost 200 points ahead. I think it's something. Crazy. But it's not enough. It's something. It's crazy. not enough. It's still. It's not never enough. enough. It's never enough. Do you have a training partner? Ah uh, no, I train best alone. I sometimes train with the guy who's in fourth place now, Birkenkat. Uh, he's his coach too. So we sometimes train together, but we don't live in the same town. So maybe once a week. But sometimes I train with the people that are in my box. So what pushes you then? Do you watch videos? I just think about what would Annie do, what would Catherine do. So I just like pretend that they're next to me. <laughs> are you? Do you know them from back home? Yeah, I know them pretty much. This is my training partner, Birgit. <laughs> He's in fourth place. Yeah. He did incredibly well too. Today, huh? Yeah, he did. Yeah. He has such a good training partner. <laughs> I have a great story. So um, <laughs> let's keep going this way away from yeah. the generator. We'll he actually yeah. won Murph which is incredible because he did it in training uh, like a bit less than two weeks ago with Dan Bailey and Dan Bailey crushed him and then today he wins Murph, comes down the stairs, I run up, give him a hug and I ask him like what the fuck happened, like how, how did you pull that off and then he told me that in the last run he really wanted to walk but he was just thinking about the money <laughs> whatever it takes whatever it takes man, I need the money so, so, so Dan beat you, and when, when did you have a chance to train with Dan? Uh, we trained at Costa Mesa, uh -huh. so last week or the week before. And how much did he beat you by? Five minutes, something. Yeah, I did it in like 44 minutes, yeah. and now I did it in 38, something. But uh, yeah, seven minute PB, I don't know what happened. He's what? Just, uh, yeah. Do you think maybe you're acclimating to the heat? Yeah. Oh. What's your theory on why he beat Dan by five minutes? Or why Dan beat him by five minutes? Uh, I think training? it's a combination of things. I think that one, because of the very strict standard in uh, the push ups, it was good for Bjorkman, but he's good at strict stuff. A lot of the other guys, I think they've been worming it a bit and just like hoping that it wouldn't be so strictly enforced. But it was strictly enforced, and it's just good for him. Discipline from his gymnastics background? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. And iron core. That's one thing. I also think that, like, honestly, he has plane tickets to pay, he has hotel costs, he has food to pay, and at the end of the day, you need to get paid. So, like, if you can win and you can, like, pay for all your plane tickets in just that win, well, that should be a motivation. I know that everybody is saying that they're here for the fun and they're here for the journey and they don't check the leaderboard, but, you know, we're here to do as good as we possibly can as coaches and as athletes, and if we do really well and we gave it all you know then it's fun but it's not fun if you do bad it's not fun if you go and you only have expenses it's not fun well that's just bullshit <laughs> what a lot of the others are saying <laughs> right but the fans they want to hear the truth i mean you wouldn't do it just for the money it's too fucking hard no no, I, no no but, it, 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 but you, what you can't do it just because or else there's better jobs i think right? i think Bjorkvin, like singleton and i He's fortunate to do what he loves to do, right. but just like us, he has bills to pay. Right. So if he can combine what he loves with also getting paid instead of only having expenses, that's a nice thing. There is another reason I didn't uh, mention, and that is Bjorkman did fantastic at the regionals and he came second, but Janikowski, who won, um, is just a tremendous athlete. He really is, and a great guy. But I think that Bjorkman is one of those guys that wants to win and he doesn't like when other athletes steals the attention. And I think that he wants to be the best athlete, not just that he can be, but just the best fucking athlete in CrossFit. And he didn't like that Janikowski kind of stole the fame uh, at the regionals and he's trying you know, to correct that now. And that's how it should be. And if you go, if you look at you know, the great sportsmen of our time, like Muhammad Ali, Michael Jordan, I'm not comparing Bjorkman to them, but they didn't like to lose. They wanted to be the best. How are you, buddy? Good. How are you doing, bud? Yeah, man. Big guy. Scary, die. Wow. Really scary day. Yeah. 
I heard when she went down, yep. I said, is she going to be back in it? And they said, well, we're talking to her coach now. It was no for a bit there. Just because it was so scary, like she was like she was like a drug addict, man. She was out of it. She was incoherent. She was just bubbling around. She doesn't remember the turnaround. She didn't go down the tunnel. She didn't. She didn't even think she finished the race. Like she thought she would stuffed everything. I'm like, man, you finished 13. She didn't even actually finish. She was out. But the docs took her bloods, checked the electrolytes. Now we're just like like nodding, going. She'll, she'll bounce back. Whether it's an hour or so, she'll bounce back. I just had to get through today, man, and just uh, give her a chance to rest up tonight, and hopefully she'll feel better tomorrow, though. Yeah. She said that she asked you if she could take a moment to have a, a pity party, and you said, fuck no. You have no time. What's it gonna do? Like, she can she can do that later on, That's and she's definitely deserved it. Oh, that's the hardest thing, is like, she's more than willing, or more than deserving of a time to go be a little bit negative for a sec, but you just haven't, you just haven't got time. You just don't get a chance for that until it's all done and done, because it does nothing for anyone. You're a, you're a father and you're yes. a coach. How do you tell someone no? Is that hard for you to tell her no, there's no time for weakness? It is, but I, I think my job is to think bigger picture. I, I didn't just do Murph, but I, I'm, I'm talking to the doctors, I'm coherent. So my job is to look after her and do what's best for her. And I know, and she knows now obviously as well, that if we had said, oh look, just sit this one out, she'd be devastated. That's two years in a row of unfinished business, that's tough. And I knew that if you just had a just had a shot at each one, and she did amazing on that snatch ladder, and then down there doing DT10, the heavy one, like I mean, it should have been a blast for her, but she still got it done, man. It was cool. It was tough. You guys walk around here like there's no pressure, and it's just like, hey, whatever, whatever. We're just doing one at a time. Yeah. And then I talked to her, and she, some, a tear looks like it's coming, and she says that hey, she wants to pay for her sister's schooling with yeah. the prize money. The thing with Cara is the pressure that comes from her is that she just never wants to let anyone down. So whether it be finishing a certain way or whatever, she just doesn't want to let anyone down. And that's and that's the pressure she puts on herself. Not necessarily winning the games, just the pressure of not letting anyone go down. That's it. How do you take that pressure off her without taking away her motivation? Because whatever her pathology or motivation is, you want her to keep it, right? So yeah, she can sure. keep driving? I think there's a, a certain amount of reality you have to inject in there. Like, the reality is it's the CrossFit Games. Everyone wants to do it, she wants to do it and you've got to keep reminding her that that's what she really wants to do. It's not all about just laying on the line for nothing. But she wants to do it. She loves CrossFit. She loves competing. So you've got to keep reminding her that that's what she actually wants to do, even if she doesn't feel like doing it right now. So I'm just a little, little beam of reality, but still keeping things calm and just, just real, I suppose. Will she be 100% a, a tomorrow? 100%? No one's going to be 100% tomorrow, but she'll be good to go. I watch everyone fail the last couple of reps. I'm like, ah, it's not worth the risk. I'd rather fail it. Where's my friend, the dog? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the final workout. Are you watching um, Are you watching Briggs? I was, yeah. I mean, uh, we're kind of similar in strength when it comes to barbell, I feel like, because we're kind of longer, leaner athletes. Um, so I was, and uh, it was fun being neck and neck, kind of back and forth. You know, at the end, I thought I could get her doing six in a row, and that's three. There was no six. <laughs> you seem like you're having way more fun than the other athletes. Like, I'm um, seeing other athletes who are just crumbling emotionally, spe especially the gals. I feel like if you let that happen to you, um, your performance kind of goes down too. So, granted, I would love to finish in the top 10 more and not like 14th, but I'm having a really good time. I'm like doing better than I expected to do, meaning in workouts that I didn't think I would do that great at, like DT and, and the snatch ladder. I didn't even make it past the first, I wasn't even close to making it past the first round in the clean ladder. And I'm better at cleans and snatches, so I'm having a great time. Do you have any advice for those girls? Um, don't let it get in your head. I mean, there's still a lot of work to be done, and I feel like the happier you are, the better you perform. After the CrossFit Games, do you have breakdowns? Like come I have, down. You know, I feel like I have more breakdowns leading up to it. I didn't have too many this year though, which was pretty cool. What's the untangible emotional strength that someone needs? Because it, it seemed like Murph just fucking like sat people of all their emotional like restraint it's, today. Yeah, it was harder. I mean, granted, I practice it. I'm one that practices the workouts. Like what, what Neil says, if you have the answers to a test, when did you study them? Uh, you know what I mean? I, I knew what to expect. I knew I felt pretty crappy after I did it the first time. Um, obviously, it was a lot harder here because of the heat and the different vest and stuff, but I mean, you can't let it get in your head. It's the same thing. You can't let it get in your head. It's going to be hard. You know it's going to be hard. You just got to embrace the suck.